We're taking this entire bin of straight mid-ranges out to a field to find out which one is the straightest. And if that sounds familiar, it's because we've done this once before. But there seemed to be something missing from that video that got everyone a little bit worked up in the comments. Hey everyone, it's Greg from Six Sided Discs. And I'm sorry that we didn't have any Mako 3 or Hex for our original straightest mid-range video. But the good news is that now we have multiples of both. Today's video is sponsored by Neomind Labs. More about them in just a few minutes. Also, if you're enjoying our Flight Numbers Don't Matter series, consider supporting us on Patreon or by picking up one of our Flight Numbers Don't Matter custom stamps from Millennium, available at sixsideddiscs.com. Before we jump into today's testing, let's remind ourselves why a straight midrange is so important. If you'd like to skip the recap and go straight to us testing this new batch of midranges, go to this timecode in the video. Previously on the straightest midrange. Back in January of 2022, we drove down to Tennessee to shoot a video with Chris Dickerson to learn all about the buzz and how important it was to his game. But the importance of a straight midrange does not end with Chris Dickerson. In fact, the Buzz is one of the best-selling discs in the history of disc golf. Amateurs and professionals alike rely on the Buzz for reliable, straight shots. When you watch In The Bag videos of professional players, they talk about these staples in their bag. So what flight numbers do you think you would use to build the staples within your bag? I think most people would agree that you start with a few specific slots in your bag, such as a 12 to 13 speed, overstable but workable distance driver, like a destroyer. You might also put in a 7 to 9 speed straight to stable fairway driver, like a T-Bird or an Undertaker. And of course, many people are going to want that straight mid-range slot, such as the Buzz. And then of course, an overstable approach disc like your Zone, and then maybe a pair of putters. Now with just these five discs, players can manipulate the angle of release or switch to a forehand to fill in most of the gaps that we see here in the flight chart. But the question we have now is, why does a straight mid-range belong as one of these staples? Udisc's Release Point blog had a great piece on how and when to throw mid-ranges. Quote, because of their ability to glide and shape shots, mid-ranges are great for both shorter tee shots and longer up shots. One thing that makes mid-range discs so popular is how controllable they are. Udisc used 2017 Advanced Amateur Disc Golf World Champion AJ Carey as one of their sources on the topic, and he said, quote, Mids fill a purpose as the most controlled flights in my bag. He went on to say, I can throw them straight on Anheusers, rollers, hyzer flips, soft hyzers, and hard fades. You cannot leave out the mids. So mid ranges are extremely important, and many players would also agree that the hardest shot to throw in disc golf is a straight shot. So if mid-ranges are the most controllable disc, it would stand to reason that they would be the easiest disc to use to throw the straightest shot. Today's video is sponsored by Neomind Labs. Disc golf courses need maintenance to be the best they can be. It's great to have tall grass, bushes, trees, and obstacles, but a course that's overgrown means you go home with poison ivy instead of your disc. Websites and apps are no different. Don't let your Ruby on Rails app fall flat. Entrust it to the stewardship experts at Neomind Labs. Neomind Labs excels in the maintenance, special projects, and management of Ruby on Rails applications, allowing your app to go the distance while you focus on other things, like disc golf. Visit neomindlabs.com or the link in the description to get in touch or book your free code audit today. Thanks again to Neomind Labs for sponsoring today's video. So, just like last time, we're not interested in distance with these mid-ranges, but only how straight we can get them to fly. Throwing for us today is Caleb Thomas. Make sure you check out his Instagram and YouTube links in the video description. Like most of our videos, we're throwing these discs in Ohio at around 900 feet of elevation. We're going to break these mid-ranges down into seven different categories by flight numbers to see which is the straightest within each category because we're quite confident that if you are only shopping for a straight mid-range by the flight numbers, you're missing out on some really great discs. Let's begin with the most overstable flight numbers we'll test today, the Discmania Neo Method at 5503, and the Mint Discs Mustang at 5502. 
In this category last time, we threw the Innova Rock 3, as well as the Latitude 64 Trust. And as you can see, both were pretty true to their flight numbers and indeed were quite overstable. Caleb's first shot with the Discmania Neo Method made it look pretty overstable. So I asked him to power it up for a second shot and it did straighten out much more than the first. The Mint Mustang in Eternal Plastic, however, was just plain overstable. So of the two, we'd say the Discmania method was a little bit straighter, but in reality, these discs probably only fly straight in a stiff headwind. Now let's move on to our second category of mid-ranges, slightly overstable mids with flight numbers of zero turn and one fade. We tested quite a few discs in this category last time, including the Discmania MD3, the Castaplast Yota, the Westside Warship, the Latitude 64 Compass, the Thought Space Pathfinder, and the Infinite Chariot. And all but one, the Chariot, were pretty reliably overstable. Today we have the Innova Star J, the Innova Metal Flake V Rock, the Innova XT Atlas, the Legacy Icon Gauge, and the finish line composite Supra. Let's start today's group with the Innova Star J, rated at 5401. It's been advertised by Innova as a straight flying midrange. But for us, on every throw, the J was reliably overstable. Next, we have the Innova Metal Flake Champion V Rock, which is stamped with flight numbers of 4501. But the V-Rock in Metal Flake Champion Plastic was nothing but overstable. In fact, it was one of the beefiest mid-ranges we tested all day. Next, the Legacy Icon Gauge. We got a couple of really good throws on the gauge, and as you can see, compared to the discs we've seen so far, the gauge was actually quite understable, getting a consistent turn before fading forward. So if the J and the V-Rock were pretty overstable and the gauge was pretty understable, it's up to the Atlas and the Supra to make a straight mid-range out of this category. Let's take a look at the Supra and Atlas side by side. It's close between the Supra and the Atlas, but I think if we had to go for one, we'd go for the Supra. The premium plastic is going to hold up and be straighter for much longer than Innova's XT Overmold Atlas. The XT Overmolds are known to be somewhat brittle, especially in colder temperatures. Moving on now to our next slot of mid-ranges with zero turn and zero fade. And this includes one disc that many people were asking for, the Innova Mako 3. And we have the Mako 3 in Champion Plastic as well. Up against it in this category is the Discmania Metal Flake C-Line MD1, AKA the Mindbender, and the Infinite Discs Halo S-Blend Anubis. Now we did test the Anubis and the Mindbender in our last video. The Mindbender was one of the straightest ones we tested, while the Anubis was surprisingly stable. But we wanted to see again how they would perform against the Mako 3. Let's begin by watching the Halo Anubis. The Anubis does start out nice and straight. Seems like it might get some turn, but actually fades out just like the iBlend Anubis did in our previous video. Next, we have the Discmania MD1 Mindbender again. And of course, just like last time, it flies nice and straight, but only for about two thirds of the flight. The Mindbender that we're testing today had a pretty generous fade to it. So by far, not the straightest one that we've seen. Finally, let's see what all the fuss is about with the Mako 3. We'll begin with the Star Mako 3, and uh, it's not exactly what I would call straight. I was told in the comment as recently as today that the Star Mako 3 was the straightest disc available on the market. And all I can say is, of course, there's gonna be some variation from run to run. Our Star Mako 3 was very understable. So let's see if the Champion Mako 3 can redeem the Mako 3. And that is what the people came to see. 
I certainly understand why so many people like the Mako 3, and I'd say it isn't as torque resistant as other straight mid-ranges are. Caleb may have even had to power down slightly to get it to fly straight, but the Mako 3 is indeed one of the straightest mid-ranges that we've tested. Next up, let's take a look at the most understable mid-ranges we'll test today, the Discraft ESP Impact and the RPM Discs Glow Pawaka Waka. Now, I'll be the first to admit that these discs were chosen because people said that they flew straight for them. And I realized after the fact how understable their flight numbers actually were. But nevertheless, let's see if they have any chance of flying straight. Apparently not. The Pawaka Waka and Impact were both super understable. Maybe if we do a most understable mid-range video, they might have a place there. But for now, we're gonna say they don't make the cut. Next, let's get back into the action and see some straight mid-ranges with flight numbers we didn't test last time. And those are mid-ranges with negative two turn and one fade. In this category, we have the Discraft Z Buzz SS, the Clash Discs Sunny Peach, and the Discraft Z Comet. And let's go ahead and watch these back to back to back. Wow, all three of these were super straight. This was the toughest category by far, but if we had to choose just one, we would choose the Discraft Z Buzz SS. The Buzz SS just had a little bit more of an effortless straight flight, a more subtle turn, and a more subtle fade. Two groups to go, and another batch of mid-range flight numbers we didn't test last time, are mid-ranges that are supposedly a little bit more overstable with negative one turn and two fade. In this group, we have the Legacy Icon Valor, the Elevation Discs Ecoflex Interceptor, the MVP Proton Matrix, and the Alpha Discs Chrome Apollo. And let's start with the Valor. The Valor looks and feels a lot like a Discraft Malta or Innova Rock 3 or even the Discmania method with this like curved beaded rim. But the Valor actually flew a lot straighter than any of those. And holding its line for just a moment before fading out leaves the Valor looking pretty good. Next, the Elevation Interceptor. And uh, well, let's just say Caleb struggled a little bit adjusting to the rubber. In fact, after all that, Caleb asked me if I thought I could do any better. And I said, sure. But then I definitely didn't do any better. <laughs> so the interceptor definitely wasn't straight, but I'm not sure that we can really say what it is either. Next, the MVP Proton Matrix. And I don't know if it was just this one or the Proton Plastic, but Holy crap, this thing was overstable. We might have to bring back the Proton Matrix if we do a most overstable mid-range video in the future, but this one was just beefy, overstable on every single shot. Finally, our last disc in this category, the Alpha Discs Apollo. We did a video recently exploring all things Alpha Discs, and we knew the Apollo needed to be in this video. And here's why. The Apollo is easily the straightest negative one turn and two fade mid-range that we tested. And deservedly earns a spot on our leaderboard. Last but certainly not least, the largest category we tested in the last video, as well as this one, 
mid-ranges with negative one turn, and one fade. In our last video, we tested nine discs in this category, and today we have five more. The Gateway Diamond Element, the DGA Squall, the Innova DX Skeeter, the Clash Steady Berry, and we have the Axiom Hex in three plastics, Fission, Neutron, and Eclipse Glow. Let's begin with the Gateway Element. This is only the second Gateway disc to make an appearance in one of our videos after the Gateway Diablo back in our Thunderbirds video. But the element is fantastic. It gets a subtle turn before it starts to fade, finishing maybe a bit further to the left than we might like for a super straight mid-range, but overall, a really solid disc. Next, we have the DGA Pro-Line Squall. The Squall is one of those six-speed mid-ranges that arguably could be a fairway driver, probably flies more like a fairway driver, but nevertheless, they say it's a mid-range. So, how does it fly? Well, pretty similar to the element. It has a subtle turn, holds straight briefly before then fading out. We would say both of these are a bit too overstable for what we're looking for, but for some players or some conditions, they could be just right. Next up, the Innova DX Skeeter. And honestly, I already know what I'm gonna get from the Skeeter. I've heard about it, it has a reputation. And honestly, it's another one of these flagship discs for flight numbers don't matter. When everyone in disc golf knows that a disc with negative one one flight numbers flies like this, there's clearly something wrong with the flight numbers. So my question is, if you were Innova, what flight numbers would you put on the Skeeter? Leave a comment down below. Next, the Clash Discs Berry. I've heard good things about Clash Discs, including about the Berry. So is it straight? Well, for us today, the answer has to be no. On every throw for us today, the Berry was just reliably overstable. It didn't have any flip up, no turn, no drift, no nothing. Just kind of overstable which leads us to the Axiom Hex. Much like the Mako 3, we didn't have any Hex in our last video and people had very strong opinions about that. But I will say in my defense, the Axiom Hex and Mako 3 are so popular, we had sold all of ours leading up to that video. But of course, I knew if we were gonna do a part two, I had to save some of those, so I made sure to order extra and reserve some for ourselves so we can make sure they made it in today's video. And to be extra thorough, we'll test all three plastics. First, let's see the hex in fission plastic. Interestingly, fission plastic is often rated by MVP as more understable than their other plastics, as MVP is one of the only companies that changes the flight numbers from one plastic to another. However, the fission hex was quite overstable. Every single throw just started to fade almost immediately. Now, I've heard that fission plastic beats in faster than other plastics, and that might be a reason why MVP says it'll be more understable, but it seems like out of the box, the fission proxy, the fission Tesla, the fission hex are all more overstable than their counterparts before they start to beat in. So let's see the neutron hex and it's definitely getting closer to straight than the Fission Hex, but it only holds that straight line briefly before a pretty sizable fade. So the only hope then for the Hex and arguably the straightest flight number category is the Eclipse Hex. And from the camera's perspective, it couldn't be straighter. The Eclipse Hex comes in big for the negative one turn one fade group here and is probably the straightest mid-range that we tested today. So one final recap then of the straightest mid-ranges we tested today. In our overstable category, the Discmania Neo Method, probably only good for headwinds, but still a very nice mid-range. At 5501, the finish line Supra comes in for the slightly overstable group. For the zero turn, zero fade group, the Innova Champion Mako 3. Our very understable flight numbers, do not earn a spot on this leaderboard, but the Discraft Z Buzz SS does for the negative two turn one fade group. 
For the slightly overstable mid ranges with negative one turn and two fade, we have the Alpha Discs Chrome Apollo. And finally, probably the straightest of the day, the Axiom Eclipse Hex at negative one turn and one fade. Shout out to the straightest mid ranges we found in our last video the ESP Flex Buzz, the Latitude 64 Opto Claymore, and the Mindbender, which we would also highly recommend. However, we can't really do a direct comparison to those discs as we're testing them months apart, different days, different conditions, different throwers. And we did sell all of our claymores after the last video. I think our findings today perfectly illustrate why disc golfers need to expand their search for a disc beyond just the flight numbers. There are so many great straight mid ranges in a variety of different flight numbers. And you could be missing out on the potential just perfect disc for you because you're limiting yourself to a specific set of flight numbers. So don't be afraid to shop around when you're looking for your next straight mid-range. Comment below your favorite straight mid-range and what you like about it, or a disc that you tested hoping it would be straight and how it actually flew for you. For Six Sided Discs, I'm Greg. We'll see you in the next one. We would say both of these are made of... Next, let's move on to our second category of mid-ranges with flight numbers. Yeah, can you flop it in front of the camera? Flop, flop, flop. Yeah, technically. They say it's a five, four, negative one, two, I think. I can't throw. But it was straight though. All right, you ready? Rubber. You can do it. Oof. Wow. content and want to see more, please consider liking the video, subscribing to our channel, or supporting us on Patreon. Your support makes this content possible.